Hi there and welcome to this short tutorial on modifiers. Um, if you don't know what modifiers are, um, they do exactly what they say on the tin. They modify. They modify an object. So in my scene, I've got this cylinder. Um, importantly, I've got it made up of quite a lot of sections. You can see the section's height I've got set to 19. Let's take it to 20. Um, 16 sections on the long, longitudinal. I can never say that word. Um, not really bothered about the rest, it's just a demo to kind of show you what you can do with the modifiers. So, here we go. <clears throat> Array, first one. I use this all the time. Array. So it's basically like it kind of instances and you can crank up the items until you've got loads or say you've just got two or whatever. Really good if you're doing buildings and things like that. There's loads of, in loads of instances where you can use that. Change the offset value, get them close together, further apart, change the direction which they run in. So they're now running, I'll just zoom out so you can see directly on top, need to increase the offset, there we go. Really useful that one. Okay, next one, what we got? Bend, yeah, another another really useful one. There are a few that I don't use very often, but these two I do bend. So you can see a cage that's been added as I mess with this angle up here. I can totally bend that around, which is pretty useful. Um, the reason why this is a little bit better or more flexible than say just actually moving your geometry to get it to that point is if you use a modifier the underlying geometry of your object is still exactly the same so if I want to kind of delete this bend modifier I just hit the delete key gone back to the normal cylinder oh my fans are kicking in again they're really annoying me um, but the other good thing about using the modifiers is for animation purposes so I could easily record that frame there um, bend it a little bit less record another keyframe so it's really good for animation as well um, okay bend done next one actually sorry one more on bend while I'm here let's just crank that up <coughs> so on the bend modifier you can change the angle you can change it to be completely unconstrained so it's now bending completely outside of that cage um, you can actually rotate the cage there we go uh, just have a play with it. That's they're really useful though. Uh, okay, bend, build. I've never used build once. Um, what build does is it kind of builds the object. So useful for animation again. If I start at zero, there's nothing there, and as I drag up through build, because it's it's kind of constructing my geometry. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit louder and hope that it kind of drowns out the noise of my fans a little bit. Uh, hopefully you can still hear me. Next up, build. Sorry, bulge. This is a cool one, bulge. So you can have a negative strength here on bulge, and you can see it's kind of sucking in the middle of my um, cylinder. Uh, push it out. Again, I can change it to be unconstrained, which is completely gone mental. Um, but quite useful, and they're really useful for accuracy, these modifiers. Um, you can bulge just on one um, axis, so X or Z. Uh, let me just change that back to constraint for one second to show you this. So there you can see it's it's not actually bulging on the uh, x-axis here, it's just on the z-axis now. Love that one. Good for bottles and things like that, um, where you just need a slight bulge. Crumple, I love crumple, crumple's great. Um, look at this as I'm messing with the frequency on that. It's really good for kind of just taking the edge off perfect models. Uh, it's the same modeling something that's it's just looking a little bit too perfect. Crumple's really good for kind of just loosening it up a little bit. Uh, crumple. Displacement. I'm not going to show you displacement. If you want to learn about displacements, watch my other tutorial on landscapes. Um, I use displacements quite heavily in that. Ring. Here we go. Look at that. It's made a little ring of objects around each other. I can change the radius on that. Push them out, push them in. Uh, if you're doing anything. Well, that is useful in so many instances. Uh, things like markers on a watch, things like that. Uh, so change the radius, change the angle. Don't want it to go the full 360 degrees. I want to add more items. Just drag up there on the items or change the axis. So we go on the X, there we go. Uh, change the angle again. Loads of fun. Good for animation again. You could get some really funky stuff out of this for animation. Okay, next one. What are we on? Shear. And I've pressed shell. Didn't mean to do that. Shear. So, as you can see, shear, that's kind of what it you'd expect. It's just kind of shearing on, on an angle there. Again, if you want to do that in another direction, just rotate your cage around. 
like so. Uh, what are we on now? What did we do last? Shit. I'm not going to do shell yet. I'll come back to shell. Smooth, smooth out your mesh, pretty obviously. Uh, more iterations, the more smoother it gets. Probably not the best model to show you on, but you get the idea. Uh, Spherify. This is pretty good actually. The, I use Spherify. You might have seen it on some of my other tutorials. Instead of using uh, a ball or a sphere, whatever you want to call it, I tend to use a box and then apply a Spherify to it. Uh, I'm going to show you that now actually. Let's just push this out of the way. I don't want this tutorial to last too long because we're not actually making anything. So I may start with a box sometimes that's three sections, three sections, three sections, and throw on a Spherify modifier. And the reason I do that, you think, why? I've just got a ball out of that. But what I've got now is I've got basically a sphere. Obviously, the more sections I've got, the more spherical it is. But there's no triangles on this, uh, which is cool. Triangles are the devil in 3D uh, a lot of the time. I'll explain why in another tutorial, but for now, yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, so back to my cylinder. Subdivision, uh, we've done that a million times before. Uh, you've probably seen that in every other tutorial I've ever done. Subdivision, basically subdivide your polygons and smooth things out a little bit. Symmetry, uh, again, you've seen me do that a million times before. Probably, although, let's just do it quickly. So I'm coming into front view. Uh, let me just make sure that's pretty much in the centre. Uh, I'm going to delete half of my model using area select, which I've got mapped to A. Hit the delete key. Uh, and then I'm going to put on this symmetry modifier. So, now we're back to kind of square one there. And what's cool now is if I want to model and do some tweaking on this, I've only got to do half of it. See? There we go. So really good for objects that are mostly symmetrical, it don't have to be completely that way. Someone's trying to chat me down there. I'm trying to ignore them for the time being. Uh, I'm going to go back a little bit actually, so I've got my cylinder back intact. There we go. Uh, what else are we on? Taper. Uh, again, bottles and things like that, taper's pretty good for. You've got the usual constrained, unconstrained in cage. Change the curvature and the strength, and again you can move the cage for position. Quite good that one. Um, a lot of uses in that. You can kind of see as I'm moving these around that they're really useful for animation. Transform. I've never used transform. I know some people do get some use out of it. Basically what a transform does is allows you to almost use the transform tool on your object. Uh, as you can see I'm rotating it here uh, and I'm positioning it and what have you. And it's over here now and I could have done that just with the transform tool but actually the underlying cylinder is still sat over here somewhere. Uh, if I delete that transform modifier, there you see we're back. I, I've never used it myself, but some people do get some use out of that. Uh, twist, love a bit of twist. So, just kind of twist your object around, let's ramp it up. If I really ramp it up, you can start to see I get a, a bit of a screw thread going on there. Change that to unconstrained and we're across the whole object, which is cool. And what else are we on? Wrap. Yeah, wrap is not one that I've ever used that much really, but you can see what it's trying to do, it's trying to wrap my cylinder around this cage that it's got. So you can wrap sphere, wrap cylinder. I've not used it, I know some people do. Uh, I probably can't help you out that much on that one. Um, I'm just playing with it now actually. Uh, is that not really doing anything? Yeah, so you can see I'm affecting that cage there. Um, kind of weird. If anyone knows anything about the wrap or or anyone wants to use it, stick it in the comments. It might help someone out. I I don't use it, um, but you might. Uh, did I want to come back to one? What was I going to come up? No, displacement. I've talked about shell. I didn't do shell. Let's do shell. So let me just delete all these top polygons. On my mold, which I'm just going to collapse so I can do that. Uh, get my select tool there, just get those polygons there, and those ones there. Yeah. Okay, so you probably know by now if you use Cheetah for any time, I can use Control click and I can select Shell and I can drag and it will basically give me some thickness. That's great, but that's now locked in. That's done. I've done my shell on that. I can quantize it to an exact. Um, 
numerical amount, which is useful. But it's done. I can't change that now unless I kind of want to move normals, and that's a bit of a pain in the backside. What I can do is add a shell modifier. Um, again, super flexible because my shell modifier has now got an offset of 0 0.1. I can change that. But that's it. I, I can change that now and then think later on it could do with being a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner, change that, and so on. So that is pretty much modifiers. I hope you learned something. Um, get using modifiers, really flexible. Uh, and I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye bye.